Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're painting the title screen from Mega Man 2. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. In Mega Man 2, the game kind of opens by showing the city with a building on the right, and then it pans up and the sky gets darker, and then at the very top, um, Mega Man is standing on the building, and then the title screen actually comes in. So that's kind of what I'm going to be painting, is the city with the mountains and then the building itself. So I sketched that into my sketchbook, um, and this is a bit more true to the game than I think I'm going to plan on making it. I plan on making it a bit more realistic and less like the Nintendo version of it with the pixels. So I'm starting with my gradient. I've mixed up a light blue, um, and I started by using cyan to make my light blue, but it was just a little bit too green, and I imagine it to be a little bit more like a violet blue. So I added some ultramarine blue and doxine purple into it to kind of just cool that blue down so it wasn't so warm. And then I took cyan and ultramarine and doxine without the white and mixed that together for a medium color for my gradient. And then I I also have some carbon black on my palette. So I'm starting with my lightest color, um, probably about two thirds down the canvas, and I'll be bringing that across and then fading that into the medium blue without the white and then fading that into black all the way towards the top. My next layer is mountains, so I'm sketching them in first to make sure the placement on the canvas is good, the shapes are good, and how many, um, just to make sure everything is nice before I fill it in with paint. Now the snow color is going to be lighter than this blue, and then the rock color, or what's underneath the snow, is going to be dark like this. The best thing about using chalk is if I don't like it, I can redraw it and erase really easily. Um, and to erase, I just use a damp towel and I kind of just scrub at it a little bit. I'm not scrubbing too hard, but just enough to get the chalk gone. The base color for the mountain is dark blue, and I made it from cyan and carbon black. And as I get closer to the bottom of the canvas, I'm just adding more and more black until I'm just painting pure black on the canvas. To paint the snow, I used light blue and only put a tiny amount on my brush. I brushed any extra off on a paper towel, then brushed it onto the tops of the mountains. This is called dry brushing and it only puts a small amount of paint on the canvas. And then I took some more paint and painted the tops of the mountains a solid light blue. I finished the mountains off by making a lighter blue and then just putting a touch of that on each mountain top. When the mountains are dry, I blocked in the skyline of the buildings with chalk. And then I mixed up a glaze using GAC 100 and yellow green and I painted a small amount of light pollution along the bottom of the city and I faded it upwards using a soft brush. With the glaze done, it's time to fill in the buildings. Far away buildings are going to be dark gray, and closer ones are going to be combinations of gray and blue, gray and violet, and gray and red. The closest buildings are going to get some value where I change up the base combination towards the top of the building. The next step for these buildings is adding any dark details, things like lines or the frames of windows. No lights yet, but that'll be coming soon. The city is looking good, it just looks a little bit abandoned, or maybe there's a power flash. Um, so the next thing I want to do is fill in some lights. And I'm using titanium white for the majority of the lights, and then once I have like a good set amount on there, I'm going to be using some yellow, light yellow, orange, maybe some red to fill in some lights, just to kind of make it look a bit more like a real city, because not every light is going to be pure titanium white. Some are tinted with neon and some other things, just to make them different colors.
finish off these lights, I'm taking some liquid white and just doing some individual little dots at the bottom. I like the city itself, and I'm really happy with how like this part turned out. I'm not sure I like the transition between the city and the foreground yet. I had drawn in these tree shapes down here to kind of give it something other than a straight line, and I like it, I just don't like it enough. So for now I'm going to leave it alone, and I'm going to work on filling in this tall building to kind of figure out how much space it's going to take up and where it's going to go. I kind of marked in a guess of where I want it to be with the chalk, so I'm going to be using the T-square um, to draw in the lines first, and then I'm going to prime it white to start to see how big it is, and at some point maybe I'll come back to this and draw around with some chalk to kind of figure out what I should do. The building is primed, so I marked in the column and then the balcony across the top. For the main bulk of the building, I'm going to be using a neutral gray number 5 just to kind of fill it in, and then I'm going to be using some white and black to give it some value. Um, for example, underneath the balcony it's going to be a little bit darker, along this side it's going to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to kind of vary it up as I fill in that base layer of gray. I'm realizing this neutral gray is actually more of a warm gray, and while that's fine, like in other paintings, this painting I think I want it to be a bit cooler so it matches the rest of it. Now I decided I didn't want it to be more of a blue-gray just because there's a lot of blue in this painting already. Um, and I thought I might go towards more of a violet or a red-violet so it's more like this building or this building here. But I'm going to give it this base layer of the um, gray I have just so I don't waste it. And also because I want it to be consistent. I don't want this like block behind everything else to show through at all. The way I filled in these windows is I took painter's tape and laid it down very carefully on top of my chalk lines. And I do that because with all three of these going on and there's one here on the edge, it's a lot easier to get a straight line and I don't have to worry so much if I use the painter's tape. So I put it down, I laid down a dark gray in the empty space, and I went with dark gray just because I think black would be too much with this here. And then I just added a little bit of black up here to darken it up for a shadow later. Then I took the tape off while it was still wet, and I do that because acrylic dries very, very fast. And if I do that, it allows me some time to clean up any paint that may have seeped under the edge. And there wasn't a whole lot. Um, one of the spaces didn't get enough paint, so I took a small brush and just kind of like touched up the edge where that was. And then like the paint that comes out is just this tiny little bit sometimes. So I have a short brush here, and this is actually just an old brush that I don't use anymore because the tips of the bristles got kind of messed up. So I chopped it off and now it's like a really stiff brush that I use for scrubbing and I use this for cleanup. Um, sometimes maybe I'll have paint on my hand and accidentally get it somewhere. As long as it's still wet and it hasn't been too long I can scrub it up with this brush. Um, if it's dried then I have to figure out how to cover it up. But I can use it to clean up these lines too. So I just get it a little bit wet and it's also clean and then I just go right on the paint and kind of just scrub at it a little bit. I might get some more clean water and just scrub at it some more. Um, most of the time I can clean up things, if not I just dry up the water I've um, put on the canvas, let it dry, and then I do have to cover it up like I do if anything dries and I have to fix it. I also had taken some white paint and did some more lights down here in the foreground. Now once that white is dry I can take some of the yellow, the orange, and the pink that I had done in the city and put those on those lights too just to kind of vary them up a little bit. It makes sense to do the balcony next because the column is going to kind of sit over it right here. So I mixed up more of the base building color and I'm just filling it in where I've taped it off. Once I've done that, I'm just going to take a little bit more black on my brush to darken it up. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow here along the bottom. The 
the next thing I want to fill in is this pillow right here. So just like everything else, I'm going to tape it off and then fill it in. I wanted to put some stars in just to kind of give something else to the sky so it wasn't just like a solid black pit up here. And I used chalk pastel just in case I did too many or I didn't like the shape or the placement, I could still change it. But from what I put on here, I like how it looks, so I'm just going to use a white paint marker and fill all of these in. There's a small building on top of the tower, like where some stairs would come up, and I've already primed it white, so my next goal is to fill it in with the base color of the building, and then to give it some value so it doesn't blend in with the balcony here. I'm also going to take some lighter version of this color and fill in just along the top of the balcony to give it a highlight. The next thing I want to do is put a railing on the balcony and then also here at the top of the column. And I think the easiest way to do that would be to take this tape and kind of tape off that section where I want it to be, and then use a paint marker to fill in the negative space. Now the paint marker has this carbon black in it, so it's just going to blend in really nice and fill it in. For the windows that I lit up, I'm painting them white first. Some of them may end up yellow, um, or I may leave them white depending on how it looks when I take the tape off. And then the ones that aren't, I'm going to make a little bit lighter of a dark gray color like this is, and then paint those that way. Just because this dark color is still sitting here under that tape, and I want it to be different from that. I think the railings need a little bit more detail, they kind of look flat, so I'm just going to do a little bit of shading kind of here and then here, um, just so the top looks like it sits over these bars. I wasn't sure what to do with these windows. Um, they just kind of felt incomplete the way they are. I felt like they needed something else. So I started looking at other paintings and some photographs of buildings, and I stumbled across Georgia O'Keeffe's The Radiator Painting. Um, in that painting, she paints the Radiator Building in New York, and some of her windows are lit up super bright, some are like a little bit more gray where they're dimmer, and then some are like kind of blacked out like these are. So I liked that transition of the third color in between the windows instead of just the two. So I think I'm going to be bringing that to this building. Um, I then decided I wanted it to be yellow instead of the white, so I took a canvas board, and this is something I've done some practices on for other paintings in the past. And it had the colors on it of the building already, which was really great, kind of these bluish grays. So I did some tests. I put some of the white down, um, like here, and these ones were white. I put some of that dark gray down. I put like a medium gray down. Um, and then I just kind of played around with different paint consistencies and different glazes just to see how it would look, um, just to see what I liked with it. So I started to like this one here and kind of just these pure yellow ones instead of the ones with the oranges in them. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a yellow glaze. 
um, maybe more of like this consistency one here. So it's like more opaque instead of these super transparent ones. And then I'm going to go on top of some of the white um, windows and then fill them in just to start to make them a bit more yellow. Some of the gray ones I'm going to do a glaze on top too just so they kind of look like they're slightly illuminated as opposed to completely dark. And then others I'm going to leave just totally gray so there's no light in them at all. Um, and then I think I'm going to do a little bit more of a thinner glaze of the yellow and kind of do maybe a little bit of a glow around some of the brighter windows. The yellow glaze worked really well on top of the white and not so well on top of the dark gray. So I tried it out and it was kind of splotchy. I tried a few of the things like doing kind of a um, glow around these windows. None of that really worked out so I went ahead and fixed it all. It's drying right now. In the meantime, I'm going to go and draw in Mega Man's helmet here on the edge. I'm not drawing in Mega Man himself but just the helmet just to kind of give it a bit more of a Mega Man feel. After I draw it in chalk, I'm going to prime it white. I decided what the building needs is it needs for these columns that are in here to sort of pop forward and to push the windows back in space. So I thought I could do that with some value. So I've retaped off these windows, I've remixed up the building color, and I'm just going to kind of fill them in and do some value just like this column has. The main colors for the helmet are a blue and a teal, and I made the blue by taking some cyan and adding white, and the teal I made a blue green and added white to that. So I'm going to start with the blue color and a tiny brush and start to fill in kind of the major parts of the helmet with it. And I'm going to be using black and white for shading, um, just because it's so small using the complements is going to be hard to do. Um, but I'm going to fill this in with these colors and then we'll move on. The last thing I have to do is sign my name, and it's really a personal choice about where you put that. Um, some people like left, I like right, it doesn't really matter. Um, some people like to hide it in the piece, um, and I just pick right, and if it doesn't work on the right for some reason, I'll put it over on the left. But um, just to make sure it's good and in a good placement, I'll use a chalk pastel first, and then I'll use a paint marker on top of that. And we're done! We have the title screen for Mega Man 2. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a phone case or a poster or fit on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.